Podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique Hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none of you know my dad walk on. Man, hey, man, the day is a, hey, this is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice yeah. and be glad in it. I like to start off like that, man. We got two esteemed guests here today, man. These guys, man, they really don't need no introduction. They've been here before, man. Uh, they actually pushed my numbers up a lot when they was here last time. The number went crazy. One of them told me, don't change nothing. Leave it like that. I said, okay, <laughs> I'm going to leave it like that. <laughs> but, man, we got Melvin Farmer and Atola Marv in the building. Atola Marv. Man, I am That's right. Man, you know, I, man, you know, when we did that last interview, man, hey, man, when y'all was together here, that was a crazy time, wasn't it? I still got, I, people call, they, that interview is the most viewed on our channel by far. Right. Well, wow. it's one more with country, that dude from Country Wayne, mm -hmm. Michael Bless. But other than that, them two right there went crazy, just like Melvin said. Melvin's, I, I was like, man, messed up my whole interview, man. I said, we both been doing it. Melvin walked like, leave it alone. When you put it out, it's yeah, going to even do better. Know, <laughs> I felt that uh, that was real reality TV, right. that it should have been shown how it was, and they take the contents. Uh, uh, it, it was really, you know, you hear people say, uh, like I heard a person say, oh, Snoop was disrespectful, Crip walking at the thing, but by the same token, uh, what happened there it was just an aberration, uh, but it did uh, bring awareness and uh, hopefully created opportunities for everybody involved. Right, because when we came together, we didn't. Nobody knew that that was gonna happen. Some people might have had a feeling, but we came with genuine hearts, hoping that we could all we could all come together to resolve something. That was the main purpose for that meeting. Well, but, at the end of the day, when you really think about it, just the fact that you know, man, you. Melvin keeps saying, I hear him campaigning everywhere. I'd be like, I told you E to come to me first. I'd be like, but man. I did, but though. I just don't feel like this dude was not was gonna, you know what I mean? No, because at some point, this conversation was not gonna be something where people were gonna just talk. I didn't feel that way. What did you think? I was hoping. <laughs> no, nah, but we didn't it. come in here with no ill. If you remember, Charleston White set the video up for us to come here. Correct, but when when I, when I, I told him went over there and said what he said at the first so when you go back before and look the at meeting my, before, start, it, before it started. I knew that kind of threw my mold off because he walked over there and you said something to him you remember that yeah and when you said that he was like we're just talking about it on thing and right. it was like at that point I'm like well this this here was kind of wild you I know saw, what I'm saying? I saw his vibe changed a yeah. little bit yeah at that point so but at the end of the day do you feel like it accomplished anything? And I'll go to you first with, with y'all doing the interview here with Charles. Yeah, it, it, it accomplished a lot, but it really showed where a person's heart was. Like I told another brother that uh, dude is not a person that is any position or has any desire to debate. He likes to dictate. So he has no podcast he ever did that he dealt with somebody that had a counterpoint to what he says. He's so used to running his mouth and saying what he say and letting it go. Uh, Mob James couldn't out talk him. Um, Cash Jones, uh, Black 100, couldn't out talk him. But he brought some people that really was intellectually way over the top of him. He wasn't going to have it. Wow, um, you, when you spoke, Melvin Farmer, everybody, but you seen Carlos Miller came on here the other day. He say, I'm, I'm going to say this, it ain't going to be no rebuttal. You know, <laughs> he had, he was, right. he was, he, 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 you could tell he watched that over and over again. Right. Right. And he like, he's like, I'm going to come in there like that old nigga did when he come <laughs> Did you that's, see that's that one? Yes, I mean, they talk yeah, about that all over the place. Just the way, just the way how he spoke about your it, demeanor. your tone, yeah, man. your everything. It's a wonder nobody came out with shirts that have all of that. Uh, they have that. Uh, they be, uh, in fact, we're starting to market. Uh, uh, there be no be debates. Uh, top, uh, uh, I don't drink mugs, the, mugs, uh, yeah. uh, t-shirts. Uh, uh, there do be no debates because, as you see, as we go further along. 
in uh, our, our endeavors on social media, whatever, whether it be audio, video, or print, a lot of times this really isn't no debate because we're stating facts as opposed to a lie, and those two conversations can never uh, coexist, a lie and the truth. So a lot of people thinking, because uh, uh, if you remember, I said I wasn't even getting up there to speak. Right. Yeah. Y'all pulled me up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I we, told we you, open it up. And this ain't just be happening, Ma. Remember we went to Gangster Chronicle and we had to tell them how to open it up with one line? We always tell somebody because you can't know what our life is. So we'll point you in the right direction like when we did Gangster Chronicle. Uh, they couldn't figure out. I just start off say, uh, take us back to 1971. Any shows we do, you'll see with something where we don't script it to open it up to get it to where we go. So a lot of people had that interpretation of feelings that uh, we was coming there to, you got to remember, me and him were still friends at that time. Right. Yeah, yeah. Still talking at mm -hmm. that time. Well, but, that's the way I even met you was through Charleston White. I tell people that all the time. They like, oh, you, he, 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 it was a narrative being thrown. Like, I just brought y'all down here to set something nah, up, and it already, wasn't even like that. But people, We had already met in L.A. But people don't realize I put Charleston White in the game and brought him breath from 2018 when he was a fan to come meet me. Charleston never was gang banging. You think Charleston could come to an A-Trade Park and say he from a rolling 60 to me? No, I'm a, immediately I'm going to say, yeah, you called him, but that's for us that going. He never was a game. So a lot of times uh, the narratives that you're hearing, because they're one-sided uh, conversations, you don't hear the other side. And I don't think that's fair when it comes to accountability and reporting on these podcasts to where people can say stuff and things and slander your name and try to change your legacy, but then they don't get the chance or the opportunity. Why Say Cheese ain't got us on this show? Why Vlad ain't got us on this show? Because it will kill off that shit. Wow. They don't want the truth to be heard. And that's a problem. Why we got to go through that? We paid our dues. No. We paid them. I, one thing I've been very, very curious about, because y'all are from two different walks of life, two different sides, I should say, but you are both campaigning together. Because when you think about Paru, which you say is not a part of the Bloods, but, and then you have the Crips. When you see the different cliques or the different gangs, they're total opposites. They're usually rivals. They're not usually people that are together, doing things together. But you, you are breaking that mode. How can you do that without the younger people looking at you like you're betraying us? But it's, you, it's not a betrayal when we're in a position that we understand we got more in common than we got apart. Me and Melvin have been through too much on our own sides. Mm -hmm. and we got people in Pyrus that don't like me, mm -hmm. Pyrus that hate me, mm -hmm. but we keep striving. So when you understand, now, all my homies like him. You know what I'm saying? It won't be no debate, man. Where that old nigga Mar? <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I, got, I go to lowrider meetings and this, and I got Crips that walk over. Um, oh, gee, I like your interview. Uh, so we're bridging a gap that as black grown men, these youngsters are seeing like them. I got more Crips that come to me and embrace me in LA that I have pyrus and bloods. Wow. wow. A lot of my own people be holding their nuts like I ain't never <laughs> said nothing. Wow. Oh, that's just more, man. <laughs> you that, know. That's but crazy. I see other dudes that don't know me from 60s, from 8 Trey, from that, hey, hey, I told him, man, I seen your, I mean, I don't even know where these people come from. <laughs> like, where, where did we grow up from? And like, man, no, I seen you, you, you and Big Melvin do this and do that. And it's it's a testimony that, man, that you didn't reach these dudes, mm -hmm. these real dudes that's in the street. Mm -hmm. We don't walk with bodyguards. We don't walk with, a, we don't be in the, we, I, we be in the hood every day. Mm -hmm. I roll the street solo bolo. Because when it's, when it's my turn, they say your arms are too shot to box with God. Mm -hmm. I believe in that. Can't nothing happen to me until he say so. No, that's, that's real. Um, and is it the same for you as well? Uh, well, when it comes to me and Marv relationship, uh, a lot of guys, 
the younger ones because they come in crip on crip, blood on blood. Right. So it ain't that hard to phantom a crip in the blood because of how the allies and the uh, structures are being made the way you have uh, 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 interactions among others that wouldn't otherwise talk. But in reality, this creates the opportunity to where they side uh, and it creates uh, where we can create dialogue amongst warring factions. Right. And also, this is where money doesn't count in the streets. You've seen so many people get count, uh, taken out in the streets. It's where your uh, respect, your responsibilities, uh, where we get that respect because we played the game within the rules of which the game is played. Mm -hmm. we, our names is solid. Uh, uh, we never uh, faltered, never did nothing scandalous. I never had a, 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 a scar, a gunshot wound, stabs, none of that. And it's because of the way we move. So at the end of the day, a lot of kids look up to us because not only have we lived this life, we've changed our life. And if we can do it, then quite naturally, you should be able to do that's it. That's true. I think that's powerful, man. And I think, I, and that's something I, I believe I mentioned it to Tola when we were talking one time. I told was like, I told him, it's just a big statement that y'all, you know, when you see y'all in the presence y'all bring on social media, it, it's, it's the thing to where it shows unity as well. If you really look at what's going on, you know what I mean? And then the thing that you portray for is all of the stuff for is just trying to deal with hidden corners and deal with the different, you know, bridging all the different gaps with the entertainers and stuff like that. That stuff matters, man. Mm -hmm. And then you see so many of them pretty much, I wouldn't say targeted. Uh, they go through a lot. I put it like that because you hear it in the news all the time where they didn't hit a bump in the road. And I always tell people, people don't really go by what you you say much as they go by what you do. You know what I mean? So I think that's something that really sticks out for me. Right. But you guys came down here. I want to thank y'all first of all. When y'all left here, my wife gave y'all them shirts and y'all wore them on uh, Cam, Cam Capone. Capone. Man, thank y'all so much, bro. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Because we just, you know, that we really were, we just was starting, you know what I'm saying? Really, just getting started. I had Melvin on very early, you know, when I came to L.A. I was just trying to get it going. And, and then when y'all left here, and, and Melvin told me, and I told you, I was like, man, I told like, man, we gonna wear the, we gonna wear those shirts, man. I was like, because it was like, man, you know, just to represent the brand the correct way. Cause uh, y'all actually mentioned Charleston wearing it and was ranting or something. You did. And you remember that? Yeah. And I say, man, no, nah. I say, we give shirts to, we, we, get, he's like, we gonna put them on ourselves. Cause it helps create a narrative of, of balance. You know what I mean? For, for, for my fire part, for me. Right. Mm -hmm. What about you? Same. <laughs> <laughs> but I got I another. See you didn't upgrade them too. Uh -huh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got design uh -huh. of That's her, man. <laughs> and I have a new design coming out soon too. Uh oh, <laughs> support <laughs> like <change>. that. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. But um, going back to your y'all's togetherness, who came up with the idea of bridging the gap? When y'all first got together and started this journey, Melvin how did it? Okay, Melvin right. called me. Um, me and Melvin had met a couple of times before doing some intervention at some at some schools. And I first met him when he got out and he wrote his book. And I had his book and, you know, I, we, I'd seen him. And uh, we did a thing and he called me and like, man, we need to get together and go out here to Ohio. And just we've been rolling, rolling ever since. since. <laughs> yeah. How did you come up with that? Nah, well, me and Sean Stevenson, uh, uh, Mr. End of Violence, uh, congratulations on your, uh, he just got a grant for his program, Sustainability, which started in 2016, where we was working with uh, Homeland Security uh, 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 and other agencies, government, but they're in the intervention and prevention. And a lot of people don't know that if you don't win Ohio, you do not become president. Mm -hmm. So that's where the power brokers play. So uh, Sean was dealing with the safety director, and one day me and Sean had a conversation and a vi vision about, this was after the 100 days, 100 nights, uh, 2015, and we was thinking what can we do to uh, uh, bridge the gap and, and stop the violence. So we wrote a letter uh, to uh, Obama uh, that was sent by an uh, uh, attorney that was with the Rainbow Coalition back in the days. And so me and Sean say, well, 
I'm going to pick two guys, and you're going to pick two guys that will make us have a six. So at the beginning, Sean picked uh, King Tone of the Latin Kings and Antonio Testa from the Luciano Gambino crime family, whose father in jail for 51 murders uh, for the uh, Luciano Gambino crime family out of New York. Mm -hmm. So he picked them two, and initially, Marv was my number one pick as far as the blood. Then I picked Fred Hampton Jr. out of Chicago because that's my boy. So I got Fred Hampton. So we got King Tone, uh, uh, Antonio Testra from Luciano. You got Ayatollah Marv from Piru. You got uh, 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 Chairman Fred Hampton from Triple C's. You got Melvin Foreman from Crips, and you got Sean Stevenson from the Flack Billy Mob. And they didn't believe that we could come together because at this time, don't forget, the Latin Kings are still doing what they're doing in mm -hmm. records in New York. So there hadn't been no integrate, inter intermediate mm -hmm. with the blacks. So that was a bridge that was gapped. So uh, I say, well, let's put a conference call together and get a meet and greet and T. Rogers on there, but it started getting political, racial and political. And I had told uh, Sean, uh, I think Marv should be the one that go. And then they seen that didn't work, and then Marv came in, and uh, we've been doing that. We worked and did the program for the mayor, Ginther. Then we uh, got certified. My mayor, uh, Boreal, out of, uh, uh, what's that, Washington, D.C.? Mm -hmm. Then we uh, met uh, Victoria uh, Pratt. She's a... Uh, attorney out of New Jersey. We work with Karen Bass. We work with Camilla Harris. Clinton we work, Lacey. Uh, Clinton Lacey that wow. ran the Department of Correction. We work with Mayor Como. We had did some work with uh, 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 Colin Kaepernick. And they, uh, yeah, we had a program that we had, I did, uh, for this program called Think Twice about what you do in life. Mm -hmm. We was on that committee with him with Pat Robertson that hosts 197, Hot 97, the third rated show in New York. So uh, that's how we got involved. A lot of people, just like I gave Charleston White, I'm a, I can pick talent. And I give them an opportunity uh, to let their voices be heard. And then I just move on. So wow. that's how that come about. Do you think that, um, because now it's just two of you, I know you started out with six. Do you think you'll ever go back to try to bridge more of the gap with the other groups again? Like, because everybody's well, seeing how we, well. We're in, I mean, it's not, it's not just the six. We individually, we from we from the West Coast. Oh, okay, so so, so you still have everybody. Oh, still, yeah. We're still okay, in communication. Okay, okay, we're, okay. we're incredible messengers. They're, okay. They're, no, this is a government-run program that's run by the feds. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, we get blackballed a lot because we don't play both sides of the fence to where we're the first credible messengers ever west of the Mississippi. Right. But yet they'll fit a change and start a credible messenger in L.A. with, a, what, $113 million budget or something? Mm -hmm. Why me and Mar aren't there as uh, instructors or something? Because we've already been certified. Nobody's west of the Mississippi mm -hmm. or before us. But that's how this game is played when it comes to politics. Uh, there, a lot of times we are a black ball for a lot of things because we won't play both sides of the fence. Yeah, because we mainly see you two in you know the public eye. We're not seeing everybody else. Well, so you, you, he said why. chairman. Him. Except from chairman, yeah. yeah. No, chairman. it's a lot of it, but we don't do it. Our, our, our boots to the ground when the camera's not around. Okay. See, we don't have to, because really it won't be publicized when y'all sit up and hear these people with this uh, dialogue and contents over the Internet. Most of them have no vested interest or no impact just in the, face. the things that they're talking about. They can't right. even walk the community. So a lot of times here, y'all don't get no call when it comes to real intervention to where somebody just got killed at 11.33 on a Saturday. You get a call that say, yo, man, did this. That's intervention. But you can't do that on no public platform. Mm -mm. So a lot that you see, that's just a shell of what's really going on. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times uh, uh, it hinders the progress that we're making because there's a contradictory. You got these uh, lip boxers, tongue wrestlers, and verbal gymnastics going on in one arena. Then you got the quiet ones where we're doing the work and doing what we're doing across the nation. But we don't seek... Uh, 
uh, no validation in what we're doing. We get it from knowing and seeing the smile on a child's face or a mother's tear or where we're doing it. We got an innocent project that we're doing to where people are talking about, oh, they're after Charleston White. It could have been Charleston White, Barry White, or Betty White, <laughs> whoever name is on these documentaries, documents that got this young man life uh, locked up. We're fighting for him, and we got more than one. I brought two of them. We do them in Alabama. We got another life case. We got a case in New Jersey where a little kid, 17-year-old, facing the death penalty where he put out a blunt cigarette and burnt and killed his grandfather and grandmother. And so we try to provide uh, 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 legal expertise to where, like, we're doing these appeals. That's $10,000 just to get started. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. We give you a lower rate, but we give you just as much quality. We just not eligible because of our records and we're on paperwork right. to where we can be really certified as uh, lawyers or investigators or paralegals, but we just can't get it. But actually we are. We're very deadly. With we you definitely call to a people. I know, you know, I call when uh, my cousin's uh, boyfriend had gotten shot up and uh, I called you on the phone and just the conversation of hearing you, the way you talk to him, all that's counseling, to be honest with you, because a lot of people can't have them conversations. Like what you said to him wouldn't have never been something I would have related to, but what you said was things that would have made him, it would have pricked his spirit, and like what you're doing ain't nothing that ain't been done. You know what I mean? And pretty much let him know, you know, uh, because what was me is the attitude you might take if you don't know. And then he didn't know who I was calling. When he found out it, who it was, he fanned out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, man, I can't believe that. Man, you know who he put me on? But it's the fact that you've been shot th f three times. You know what I mean? You laying in a hospital bed. Any little inspiration at that point is is, is a hell of an inspiration. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I didn't even see that coming, but it's st certain things like that that you can't make up, you know what I'm saying? So I appreciate you, man, for sure, you know what I'm saying? That's why I call mess with you sometimes, be like, man, what about this or what about that? Because at the end of the day, if it's something that we can do, you know what I mean? You know, I always, we, our podcast is here to help, you know what I'm saying? Um, definitely want to see you guys. Where y'all going with this next, man? You know, I know uh, Carlos Miller wants y'all on 85 South. Well, he said it on this show. Uh, DC, <laughs> DC Fly been calling DC my Young Fly. boys, them, uh, uh, Rio and uh, Shotgun and them, and we just waiting on Mr. Miller to make the call. You know, we feel that your word is your bond. And this go for uh, uh, Say Cheese, Vlad TV. A lot of them don't want you on there because they don't want the truth to come out because of the saturation of a lot of misconceptions and it had changed the flow of the game. So uh, all of them need to be held accountable. Uh, you know, we hear people slander people, we hear people talk, we hear people doing this. Let's bring and see what we really bring to the table to where uh, we don't need to hit out your mouth. Uh, we need to see what you bring into the table when the camera's not around. Yeah, I heard you say something. I heard you say. I you was just the, about go what? ahead. You go, go ahead. I, I, I'm gonna let you. Go. I was just about to say um, when you're talking about you know the different shows and everything. Y'all were on um, Adam. Show. Oh yeah, Adam Twenty Two. Adam Twenty Two. No jumper. No jumper. Shout out, no jumper. And I heard you say because we were watching at him like. He said, no good E. And I'm like, what <laughs> you mean me by out. that? I don't know why he called me out. That was you, oh, Melvin. You, you man. Yes, you did. You yes. said, no good E. You no said, no good E. Oh, oh, if I did say that, I don't mean it like, no good E. I meant it, it probably was in the tone of something like, if you didn't listen to me. When I, when I said it, it come to me, yo. This wouldn't have happened. But no, I don't look at no, no uh, interview so or nothing. It'll be like you doing a robbery and then blaming the DA that's prosecuting prosecuting <laughs> for him prosecuting you when you asked. I mean, I knew about, about it. Two, two or three people called me about it. Man, I thought you and Melvin was well, friends. Yeah, cool. I, so let's I just talked record. to him. I said, <laughs> no, I didn't talk to him. No, that wasn't made like, go, like no good. No. <laughs> that, that was, you, what was the conversation. You didn't hear Big D. Big D just said it. It was, it, 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 it was talking about, he was, you were talking about um, what happened on the show. Well, when I didn't come to you first. Yeah, that's what I meant, but I didn't mean like it was nothing, but I already, if they came to me first, because I was sitting way back there. And I said, Marv been writing notes. See, people didn't know. Yeah, Marv, Marv was prepared. Marv had a book where yeah, he was going to ask questions. <laughs> yeah. But I had told Charleston ahead of time, bro, outside, don't get on here. And the people you met through me talking about fucking them in front of my face. I okay. told him that. 
So he going to come with that king shit or third island shit. And that's how that went. But I didn't even want to go on the show. You called me up there. Yeah, and I said, I wanted you to be on the show with me. That way I could have said, Charleston, uh, uh, Marv got this here. These are just questions and answers. Y'all can talk, but it ain't going to be no disrespect. None of that. Let's yeah. just talk. And that would have set the ground rules. But you didn't come to no, me No, I first. didn't come to you first. You went I, to him, and that's how and, that shit but, went. But you know the thing about it is, like I said, when we first started, I didn't see that coming with when I, t I told him went over there and talked to him, and they said them few words. It's on camera because I put it out. Yeah, but I mean, we, it wasn't I said a few words. Everybody was introduced. I didn't know, dude. No, yeah, that's what it was. And, 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 never you, met and I said, I'd never, oh, and you okay. said, oh, I thought y'all yeah, had and then, I, and, then, yeah. and then I went over and I said, hey, how you doing, bro? He, he like, yeah. And he says, well, what is it about? I said, I just want to holler at you about what you said about Montreal. Whatever you and uh, Mob James had, Compton has a certain feeling about, he said, oh, we'll talk about it later, bro. And that's when he sat down and he went on his rant. See, I didn't interview, introduce Marv to his so-called wife because I know that wasn't his wife. Huh? Who did you that think it was? That ain't his wife that was back there in the back. That's not his wife. Then, so who is my, his, then who is his wife? Probably the police. That's why he got to walk That That's not his wife. His wife was white. Had no, that wasn't his wife. Right, that wasn't his, his wife. No, the white woman wasn't his wife. Right, but that the lady there. Woman, that, right. That's his wife now. Yeah, that's, that's his wife kids. now. No, because you talking about um, the prostitute. Well, I don't, I don't know, I don't know about that. The, I, I, know, I don't know, I know about definitely that. Definitely, she was a prostitute, and uh, the dude that he was supposed to be pimping uh, took her and dropped it. What he talking about? All this? He need to go get a DNA test on them kids because they're not his. So that's what he come to. He was a dope dealer. He got robbed. He was a pimp, and they took his hoe. And she left the two kids on the doorstep. Then he got this lady here, and that's who's taking care of yeah, him. But once again, kids. I'm gonna speak for myself. I know Charleston since 2018. I don't know every girl he don't had every kid. Him, Joe Blow, the stop six, and that is not the woman that I met all the way up to prior. That ain't the woman he introduced to me prior to seeing her that first day. So I was skeptical when he said, oh, this my wife. Mm -hmm. Is this your wife? And you ain't never been with her. You ain't seen her. You still ain't seen her. But just for me, that's why I didn't introduce her tomorrow because I don't know about whatever the other stuff, but me speaking for myself and what I know, that it's not only seen him with one woman. And that's what's for three or four, 2018, 19, about three years, so mm -hmm. that kind of put me off uh, uh, as far as uh, really being aware of where we at and don't go too far with it. And we never came there uh, to get no uh, violence or nothing. Mar right. had took, right. I sat there with Mar. Mar wrote letters and notes for three days about all kind of stuff that he had written. He just did that and took it drama. And then when he went outside, he know he couldn't just leave without us having some type of understanding. So he going, he coming, he going, he coming. And I'm just telling him, you better come on back. And then that's when we talked and I told him basically, still sharp and still, young man. But don't, you don't run now, you ain't got it like that. A lot of people wanted to know what happened when you said, hey! I went outside, <laughs> yeah, I went outside. You remember that? Did a lot of people ask you? <laughs> when they saw you? Asked Nobody me, asked you? They asked me what no, happened outside those doors. I said, y'all got to watch. I'm right. telling You're you right. what right. happened right. outside that. He kept going right down at that end, going in and out, jumping back and forth. He see me telling him to come back like this, but he know if you leave and we ain't got no resolution, it's on on site. So when he came back, and I say, bro, still sharp and still. I say, you put me in a position where you met people through me and you talking about them. I told you, you can't do that. So all this shit where people thinking people mad because he talking about Crip. No, that ain't got nothing to do with it. He got in the game through me. And the people you talking about you met through me. He don't know no Nipsey Hussle. I took him to that concert. He don't know nothing about nobody he talked to. Me and Marv talked to anybody on the internet. I don't give a damn. It's Jay-Z, Puff Daddy, uh, 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 or anybody else. We got action to that because we're fabrics of that community and we have a vested interest. 
So at the end of the day, we never had nothing. Uh, uh, I don't want to see nobody be hurt because that would be contradictory to what you're you picking and choosing. Right. Whereas on these internets, y'all pick and choose your heroes. Then when your heroes turn out to be zeros, you got a problem. No. Mm -hmm. That ain't how the game go. Wow. Mm -hmm. Man, just uh, definitely, uh, uh, I think, man, one of the greatest things that's going to happen for the platform is we got to meet you guys, man. Y'all come down. We always have a good time. People didn't realize is we ate We ate after that. Then we, 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 we sat in there and that's, ate. That's and we, we, in love, we, <laughs> <laughs> we sat here and ate and everything else that day, man. We we stayed a late late that night just mm -hmm. eating and talking. And, and we always, we know we go old school. Telephone, yeah. tell a nigga. <laughs> we don't go on the internet to talk shit. We go and we talk every morning. Mar might have the breakfast club. We yeah. might call yeah. you at six. Yeah, and we sit and we just talk. In fact, we're talking about starting a show once weekly where we do a fact check. Yeah, on the information that's been told over the internet, and we just bring a fact check. Oh, that's true. Oh, that ain't true. I see so much stuff. That's on live there. though. Yes. So would I be on your podcast that yeah. you would be having? That's, 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 that's heavy. That that's would be, heavy. That, that would be that's awesome. That's what we want to do. A but fact that's, check that's, that's that's to where really we good. don't have no bias opinion. We're just an unbiased urban analyst that look at the facts and we check. Like I hear the story about Big U got caught with two guns. I hear that all over the internet and they was found at his home. But I was there when the two guns was found and they wasn't found at his home. Fact check. Fact check. <laughs> Them guns was found in a, uh, uh, a commercial building because I just had one over there, me, Big U, Bear Claw, Money Mike, the rest in peace, and Rip, the Reverend. All of them were uh, rolling 60s, but a murder had occurred. See, this is what I'm talking about where you won't hear shit, and I'm just sharing this story. Mm -hmm. But a murder had occurred where I had uh, wrote the press release. I knew the family, the victim, the mother, the victim since he'd been born. In fact, it's the Red Shoe murder. Went over 20 million views since we're talking about views, and they bragging about that little shit. So anyway, <laughs> uh, we having a conversation, but something told me this building might be Mike because of the activity going on with certain individuals. So every time I'm there, all uh, you heard me say was, mm-mm, mm-mm. That's all I kept saying. And they kept saying, what's wrong with you? But something told me, don't open my motherfucking mouth. The next day is when they ran in there because they had Mike up under... Uh, surveillance, uh, FBI. Uh, in fact, they was unsealing the indictment. So when you hear about Big U got caught with good two guns, that wasn't Big U, that was found in a whole nother building. But on the internet, he got this. It's a lot of things that are, uh, are contradictory to what's really going on in life to where you get a one-sided view of it. And like I say, uh, we, we think that uh, the internet need to be held more accountable. Mm -hmm. You might need to put a disclaimer out there that's saying some of the contents of this show could be false or fictitious. Right. That instead of putting it out there like everything is there, it's the gospel truth when it's not. But well, in fact, but in fact, a lot of podcasts or a lot of shows, period, that is how it is because when a person comes on, unless you just went and hired an investigator and check every single person's story that comes on your show, there's no way you're going to know that everything that they're saying is 100% true because I'm not saying it's a lie because we both can go somewhere and experience an event. And I come back and say it to you in one way and he comes back and say it to you in another way. And neither one of us is telling a lie, but it's how we perceive that truth. You see what I mean? So but it's just now, when you usually get paid to go on anything, that's usually a disclaimer. Right. <laughs> You're getting paid to go on the internet. So that means I don't been on shows where they don't say it, just say anything. <laughs> anything crazy to get the views. But I won't do it. So once again, uh, you might have them that does that, but still there have to be some type of accountability, particularly right. when you're slandering people's names right. and telling lies and then they don't get to tell their side of the story. Exactly. That's not cool. Yeah, no, that's definitely not cool. Yeah. No, man, thank you guys, man. Do you, do you, do you, yeah. uh, on the pocket, on that fact check, um, what I had in my mind, are you going to only be dealing with current events or you'd be dealing with just Everything. Information yeah, in general. Because y'all know, in general. Urban, know about life. Okay. I don't know what they're doing in Beverly Hills. I don't care. 
but what's happening in, in our environment and what brought it up to happen in our environment, sometimes people have to know. Okay. And wow. not just uh, the internet per se for hip hop. We got ideas for, uh, say, doing a lot of times we don't see a lot of black baseball players. Mm -hmm. But our theory is because of these uh, inner cities and these pockets of poverty where they're spending so much money on basketball, that's during the winter, football during the winter, baseball is summer. We feel that by then the money has dried up. Mm -hmm. So they got the RBI league. But when I grew up, I played sports all my life. Uh, we had inner city businesses McDonald's would sponsor the Cardinals. You win, you get a hamburger, fries, and a Coke. They buy the uniform and boys market. You had people that were in the community that would uh, take back and recycle the money you spend in it towards the use. But what has happened over the years and because of evolution, uh, now you got all the businesses that are owned in the inner city or by Koreans, whites, or, or, or Latinos or something, and that money's not circulating. It goes back outside. Whereas we're spending our money on designer clothes and jeans, we're not creating uh, where the money stays. So we feel that a lot of these uh, uh, businesses should be given some type of contribution back to the community to help the youth uh, like they used to on the west side of town. Right. Wow, it's just so much history with you guys, man. And even with the stuff that we've done today, you know, it's like I tell people when they get ready to interview, I'm like, y'all not going to, you're not going to get everything. Ain't no way in hell you're going to get, <laughs> you, gonna, you might scratch the surface of anything, but these guys are not the same as just interviewing because of the history that they've held and the things that you guys have been through. You know what I mean? And 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 definitely we understand that, especially not even being brought up in a lot of the time, the culture and, you know, the places that you guys have been as well. We come up from two different sides of the world, but y'all, not only did y'all come up on different sides, but hell, y'all been everywhere you're everywhere you go everywhere <laughs> you've been everywhere if i say louisiana oh man marvin oh well i was over at such and such i'd be like damn i ain't, I ain't even been over there you know what i mean or, or it's just it's just because you, can you guys say jamaica around. you can say oh there she go yet? i've been to jamaica <laughs> <laughs> i've been to 40 states of the united states and five foreign countries what That's place it. haven't you been have you been to dubai yet i haven't been to dubai okay uh, man <laughs> like when i seen dubai it was Dirt land. Right. Yeah. Oil, oil money made it a, a metropolis. It is. Oh my it's that's the new place that everybody wants to go right now. Uh -huh. Dubai. We, we ready to shut it down? Yeah. Man, you guys did a great job, man. Thank y'all for coming on the show, man. We love you guys, man. It's always a pleasure and an honor just to even be able to sit on the, on an August panel like this. It's an honor for us to come and eat the Queen's food. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, we all ate good, and uh, uh, we want to thank everybody and support us and uh, hear what we got to say. Everybody. We're just trying to get back to the community uh, to make it to where a child uh, doesn't go to the things we had to go through to where uh, we can give it a better day and make our people proud, man. That's all we're trying to do. Man, man, appreciate you so and, much, uh, man. I want to give a shout out uh -oh. on, a, on a project that we're on. Okay. Uh, about uh, the the brother Antoine Doolittle. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, what uh, Melvin was displaying okay. on the work that we're doing. Okay. Antoine. What you got there? This is, this is a... a Take a it, picture of that. Our, our app, this is what we're trying to do now. Uh, Antoine's been locked up since 1991. It says Melvin and Atola Marv, dollar sign gangsta legal. Okay. And at the bottom said legal consultant, consultants. Yeah. If everybody pitch in a dollar, we can do a lot with one dollar. Turn it to that camera as well. We can, we can do a lot with a dollar. Yeah. This uh, we, uh, we we were discussing about, and that's th his picture on the top. The uh, th this is Rochelle McGee, okay. one of the uh, oldest convicts in uh, California State Prison. He's been down since 1960. How old is he? Um, he's 84 now. Wow. And he's been in solitary confinement since 1966. Solitary confinement. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was with George Jackson and wow. and uh, San Quentin. He's one of the Soledad brothers. Uh, he was with uh, George's brother, Jonathan, when they got shot at the Marin County shootout in 1970. And uh, he was shot 33 times. Mm. And uh, the, 
Department of Corrections says as long as Rochelle McGee is alive, he'll never let him out of the hole. Wow. wow. You know, mm -hmm. this guy came from, it's so amazing. Me and my father were coming down Central Avenue, and it was a, a club called the 5-4 Ballroom. And these police had this guy up against the car. My pop stopped and said, you all right, bruh? This and this and that. So they said, well, we're going to let him go, right? And a little while later, my grandmother was uh, friends with, with Jimmy Smith, the Onion Field Killers. The Onion Field Killers. Onion Field Killers. Yeah, and we Smith. went down to court, and I see this guy again, 1961 him and George Jackson. Turn around in 1972, I go to San Quentin and I meet him again. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So it show you how life turns around. And uh, this brother, uh, Antoine Doolittle, he was 15 at the time his crime was committed. I'm not saying whether he did it or what he did, but the the logistics of white America says that a, child, a child's brain does not mature until they're 20, and he does not have reasoning until he's 26. That's for white people. All the depressions that black children have to go through. I got stuff on DPSS, I mean, uh, uh, postmortem, what the tragedies that happen with a child. And if he had been a white child killed a black man, he'd have went to a mental institution. The white boy that shot Ronald Reagan never went to prison. Hinkley. He went to a crazy house. St. Elizabeth. And, 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 and was out on weekends. So it's such a disparity here. It says in the state of Texas, black children go to prison 56 times more than white children. Right. And you ain't but 12% of the population. Wow. So it's, a, it's such a disparity that we allow to happen to our children. I guarantee you his jury didn't comprise of blacks, juries of your peer. One other than that for, for Antoine. How can you stop it? Well, actually, we are, this is like this Charleston White paperwork to where we hear Charleston say, Charleston White turned state's evidence 30 days after he was incarcerated. But we're here on the internet, oh, I killed a white man. That's not what you said at that jury when they asked you who killed Michael Levy. You pointed at Antoine uh, Doolittle and said, that man in that gray suit. You go on the internet and you say, oh, my mama got me a lawyer, my uh, uh, mama, and we went, but on this paperwork, it was a public defender. When you were 14, 30 days later, you turn state's evidence and say it, you will testify. So Charleston White never was arrested for a murder. In fact, if you look at the transcripts, you hear him slip and say when he first come to testify, and by the way, uh, they didn't know all three of them had agreed, it was four of them, where they all agreed that they would take the fifth. But Charleston White already had took a deal and didn't tell them. So. Uh, one of them had to take 99 years. But when you look at this uh, uh, affidavit, this transcript, you don't see Charleston White as a defendant. You see Antoine Doolittle. Charleston never was going to prison. Nobody never talked for him at that Texas commission to stop him where he say, oh, they felt I was doing that. Ain't how that went. So what we're doing here, and just to let you know, this is not the only case. This is another case we're doing of another man who's been in jail 29 years for murder in Salma, Alabama. So we're not just talking about this as if, like I say, it could be Betty White, Charleston White, or Barry White. Whoever names are in this paper are subject to being a, 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 a defendant or a party to this complaint. The same way with this one. So we're not picking and choosing. And it's not just limited to those. You might no. be adding more as time goes on. We along. have more. Yeah, that's, we're, our, 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 our goal right now is for brothers or uh, 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 youngsters that are incarcerated that don't have the legal acumen that we can reach out and give them some kind of assistance. 
Because all these projects, they pick and choose who they want to represent, right. who they don't want to represent. Uh, we gangster law. We got a gangster legal aid. We legal consultants, and out of twenty five years, I know the law. I know how to go to prison. Mm. You know what I'm <laughs> it, don't, it don't take no Einstein to get there. Know how to go in there, but how do you get out? Mm -hmm. uh, because, it, like I said earlier, one thing about playing the game until you know the rules. You can play all day and don't know the rules, and everything you do is a foul. Mm -hmm. But we're in a position. When they make you make a file on you, we can go in the book and find out this error. There's always an error in law. Because mm -hmm. like we talk about telling the truth. That's the loophole. In in the in the court system, it's not about the truth. It's about the facts. The facts don't make it the truth, huh? Mm -mm. Or it's not even always about the fact it's reasonable doubt. Well, it's, beyond it's a reasonable beyond a reasonable doubt. It's, it's how you make it evidence, right. But that's how, on a state level. Okay. You got two different levels. You got state where it's beyond a reasonable doubt or whatever. Then you got where with the federal level, you have to show basically what intent more or conspiracy or something of that nature as opposed to get that. But what's in, more importantly about me and Marv and others that are sisters is you got a lot of innocent projects. Uh, a berry smirk or whatever that was with OJ that started the first one. But when you look at them, all of them deal with DNA. That's mm -hmm. the easy way out, where you just go see if the DNA matches or come look at a chain of command. Because you work, didn't have that back then. No, nah, but the work you have mm -hmm. to do here, yeah. you have to read every page and look for that one loophole. Mm -hmm. So it's a different project, which most people do not, not one cannot afford, because it's 10,000 or better, but usually they don't want to take the cab because of the groundwork. It ain't like it where you guys got DNA, and then you can say, oh, we got a DNA mismatch, and then you go and present it. But, but even more than that, uh, uh, on what we're working with, if you did it, I'm not trying to say it didn't even happen. Right. But what was your mindset? These children that are in prison, that and this man is uh, was 15, turned 16, now he's 57. What has his life been through? What? It, why, how much trauma has he had to endure? Right. As a young kid, now he's a grown man, been in a cage all this time. So we have other children that are growing up in the system that their parents didn't have no way out, couldn't mm -hmm. afford it, they can't afford food for them. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's, a, there's a white law and there's a black law. So we're trying to bridge the gap in getting some of these dudes justice. Right, recently I was, we were interviewing a gentleman, he's um, called a hood therapist. And um, a question that I had proposed to him, because when you think about PTSD, uh, back when I was younger, you think about military people, people who went to war and, you know, all the things that they saw and they came back and they're getting treatment. But when I started thinking about whether gang members or policemen or those people out there going through situation, trauma, trauma but these young men, as much as inner city people are seeing people being killed, mm -hmm. people right in front of them, they're not getting counseling. They're not getting anybody well, to help them to say, okay, how do I deal with this? Um, so that's the, the thing that I look at is like they have to go through their whole life and you wonder why they are the way how they are because mm -hmm. they're not being treated mentally how to deal with this and how to move on to be a better product in society. What you're saying about that, this is, this is a quote from Texas, right? And it says, but it's also found disproportionately youth of color, particularly young black boys, were more likely to receive harsher punishments even though their offenses didn't increase in severity. What are the biggest challenges facing juvenile justice system right now in 2022? The most common diagnosis is attention deficit, mm -hmm. hyper dis, uh, hyperactive disorder, H, ADHD, mm -hmm. learning disabilities, LD, disabilities, DD, conducted disorders, anxiety disorders, and post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. So 
these are the PTSD that you talk about from the war. We get this in the hood. Right. You but it's not being treated. Yeah, when you we, have the vets, have they can uh, help. We have a, a Senate bill we're trying to introduce that we call, I call ISIS, acronym ICSS, Inner City Ses Stress Syndrome. Okay. Well, I believe the conditions that the inner city youths uh, suffer from, from a uh, uh, homelessness, drug addiction, abuse. mental health, abuse, uh, domestic violence, mm -hmm. I think that creates the same situation and mindset right. as you would be in going to war. Mm -hmm. And I feel that the inner cities exactly. should have the same uh, uh, diagnosis and, and, and tests that's ran on them uh, that they do in the service because they're basically at mm -hmm. war on American soil, the things mm -hmm. that they see waking up in the morning to a dead body, uh, seeing hoes and pimps out at night, seeing your mother a drug addicted, seeing homelessness and right. all these things. I think they should be compensated as a more innovative, updated way of reparations as opposed to saying what we deserve back then. You don't have to go back then. To me, you can just change start the right word now. and start right, right now. now. And not We're only that, but way. actually have um, the insurance companies being able to cover it. Because when you offer this and these people who may not be able to afford it, you know, it's not gonna, still not going to help because That's they right. can't even afford to go. And, or, and you are hiring counselors and psychologists to help these people who never been in their situation, don't know what it's like, they're trying to help you from a textbook and not from reality. So a lot of times they don't know how to relate and the people who they're talking to can't relate to them. So they're not really getting the full help that they need. And if we're saying that to where they can't relate to them, how do you think a lot of these people that they following on the Internet were the people on the streets? They ain't going to be able to relate to them because right. they got more graduation pictures than mug shots, sorry to say. But in this game, getting killed is a badge of honor. Getting a mug shot is a badge of honor. And if you ain't part of that fraternity, then your words have nothing to do. That would be like us coming into a swear man's world and telling them what they need to do and we never experienced it. And that exactly. comes from being a careless listener. Right. That's come from what a lot of these people are, are careless listeners. That's why I was impressed with the program that he was putting together um, because he had been in trouble. Um, who went to prison, did all of that sort of stuff. So he understood how to help someone who was going through those instances as well. And I'm sure that there are some counselors out there who's been through trauma, been through things, and that's the reason why they become a counselor or a psychologist or just someone who can give back and help. But they're few and far apart. You just have to find them. Wow. Man, thank you guys, man. Hey, man, appreciate you. We love you. And I think we got to uh, yeah, we got to go now. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.